Welcome to Data Science and Introduction. I'm Barton Polson, and what we're going to do in this course is we're going to have a brief, accessible, and non-technical overview of the field of data science. Now, some people when they hear data science, they start thinking things like data and think about piles of equations and numbers, and then to throw on top of that science and think about people working in their lab and they start to say, that's not for me. I'm not really a technical person and that just seems much too techy. Well, here's the important thing to know. While a lot of people get really fired up about the technical aspects of data science, the important thing is that data science is not so much a technical discipline, but creative. And really, that's true. The reason I say that is because in data science, you use tools that come from coding and statistics and from math, but you use those to work creatively with data. The idea is that there's always more than one way to solve a problem or answer a question, or most importantly, to get insight. Because the goal, no matter how you go about it, is to get insight from your data. And what makes data science unique compared to so many other things is that you try to listen to all of your data, even when it doesn't fit in easily with your standard approaches and paradigms, you're trying to be much more inclusive in your analysis. And the reason you want to do that is because everything signifies, everything carries meaning, and everything can give you additional understanding and insight into what's going on around you. And so in this course, what we're trying to do is give you a map to the field of data science and how you can use it. And so now you have the map in your hands and you can get ready to get going with data science. Welcome back to Data Science and Introduction. And we're going to begin this course by defining data science. That makes sense. But we're going to do it in kind of a funny way. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the demand for data science. So let's take a quick look. Now, data science can be defined in a few ways. I'm going to give you some short definitions. Take one on my definition is that data science is coding, math, and statistics in applied settings. That's a reasonable working definition. But if you want to be a little more concise, I've got take two on a definition that data science is the analysis of diverse data or data that you didn't think would fit into standard analytic approaches. A third way to think about it is that data science is inclusive analysis. It includes all of the data all of the information that you have in order to get the most insightful and compelling answer to your research questions. Now, you may say to yourself, wait, that's it. Well, if you're not impressed, let me show you a few things. First off, let's take a look at this article. This says data scientists, the sexiest job of the 21st century. And please note that this is coming from Harvard Business Review. So this is an authoritative source, and it's the official source of this saying that data science is sexy. Now, again, you may be saying to yourself, sexy, I hardly think so. Well, oh, yeah, it's sexy. And the reason data science is sexy is because first, it has rare qualities. And second, it has high demand. Let me say a little more about those. The rare qualities are that data science takes unstructured data, then finds order, meaning, and value in the data. Those are important, but they're not easy to come across. Second, high demand. Well, the reason it's in high demand is because data science provides insight into what's going on around you. And critically, it provides competitive advantage, which is a huge thing in business settings. Let me go back and say a little more about demand. Let's take a look at a few other sources. So for instance, the McKinsey Global Institute published a very well known paper and you can get at it with this URL. And if you go to that web page, this is what's going to come up. And we're going to take a quick look at this one, the executive summary, it's a PDF that you can download. And if you open that up, you'll find this page. And let's take a look at the bottom right corner, two numbers here, I'm going to zoom in on those. The first one is they are projecting a need in the next few years for somewhere between 140 and 190,000 deep analytical talent positions. So this means actual practicing data scientists. That's a huge number. 
but almost 10 times as high as 1.5 million more data savvy managers will be needed to take full advantage of big data in the United States. Now, that's people who aren't necessarily doing the analysis, but have to understand it, who have to speak data. And that's one of the main purposes of this particular course, is to help people who may or may not be the practicing data scientists learn to understand what they can get out of data and some of the methods used to get there. Let's take a look at another article from LinkedIn. Here's a shortcut URL for it. And that'll bring you to this webpage, the 25 hottest job skills that got people hired in 2014. And take a look at number one here, statistical analysis and data mining, very closely related to data science. And just to be clear, this was number one in Australia, in Brazil, in Canada, in France, in India, in the Netherlands, in South Africa, in the United Arab Emirates, in the United Kingdom, everywhere. And if you need a little more, let's take a look at Glassdoor, which published an article this year, 2016, and it's about the 25 best jobs in America. And look at number one right here, it's data scientists. And we can zoom in on this information. It says there's gonna be 1700 job openings with a median base salary of over 116,000 and fabulous career opportunities and job scores. So if you wanna take all of this together, the conclusion you can reach is that data science pays and I can show you a little more about that. So for instance, here's a list of the top 10 highest paying salaries that I got from US News. We have physicians or doctors, dentists and lawyers and so on. Now, if we add data scientists to this list using data from O'Reilly.com, we have to push things around the side and it goes in third with an average total salary, not the base that we had in the other one, but the total compensation of about $144,000 a year. That's extraordinary. So in sum, what do we get from all of this? First off, we learned that there is a very high demand for data science. Second, we learned that there's a critical need for both specialists, those are the sort of practicing data scientists, and for generalists, people who speak the language and know what can be done. And of course, there's excellent pay and altogether, this makes data science a compelling career alternative and a way of making you better at whatever you're doing. Back here in data science, we're going to continue our attempt to define data science by looking at something that's really well known in the field, the data science Venn diagram. Now, if you want to, you can think of this in terms of what are the ingredients of data science. Well, we're going to first say thanks to Drew Conway, the guy who came up with this. And if you want to see the original article, you can go to this address. But what Drew said is that data science is made of three things, and we can put them as overlapping circles because it's the intersection that's important. Here on the top left is coding or computer programming, or as he calls it, hacking. On the top right is stats or stats and mathematics or quantitative abilities in general. And on the bottom is domain expertise or intimate familiarity with a particular field of practice, business or health or education or something like that. And the intersection here in the middle, that is data science. So it's the combination of coding and statistics and math and domain knowledge. Now let's say a little more about coding. The reason coding is important is because it helps you gather and prepare the data because a lot of the data comes from novel sources and it's not necessarily ready for you to gather and it can be in very unusual formats. And so coding is important because it can require some real creativity to get the data from these sources to put it into your analysis. Now, a few kinds of coding that are important, for instance, there's statistical coding. A couple of major languages in this are R, and Python, two open source free programming languages are specifically for data, Python's general purpose, but well adapted to data. The ability to work with databases is important too. The most common language there is SQL, usually pronounced SQL, which stands for structured query language, because that's where the data is. Also, there's the command line interface, or if you're on a Mac, people just call it the terminal. The most common language there is bash, which actually stands for born again shell. 
And then searching is important and regex or regular expressions. While there's not a huge amount to learn there, it's a it's a small little field. It's sort of like super powered wildcard searching that makes it possible for you to both find the data and reformat it in ways that are going to be helpful for your analysis. Now let's say a few things about the math. You're going to need things like a little bit of probability, some algebra, of course, regression, very common statistical procedure, those things are important. And the reason you need the math is because that's going to help you choose the appropriate procedures to answer the question with the data that you have. And probably even more importantly, it's going to help you diagnose problems when things don't go as expected. And given that you're trying to do new things with new data in new ways, you're probably going to come across problems. And so the ability to understand the mechanics of what's going on is going to give you a big advantage. And the third element of the data science Venn diagram is some sort of domain expertise. Think of it as expertise in the field that you're in. Business settings are common. You need to know about the goals of that field, the methods that are used, the constraints that people come across. And it's important because whatever your results are, you need to be able to implement them well. Data science is very practical and it's designed to accomplish something. And your familiarity with a particular field of practice is going to make it that much easier and more impactful when you implement the results of your analysis. Now let's go back to our Venn diagram here just for a moment. Because this is a Venn, we also have these intersections of two circles at a time. At the top is machine learning. At the bottom right is traditional research. And on the bottom left is what Drew Conway called the danger zone. Let me talk about each of these. First off, machine learning or ML. Now you think about machine learning and the idea here is that it represents coding or statistical programming and mathematics without any real domain expertise. Sometimes these are referred to as black box models. They kind of throw data in and you don't even necessarily have to know what it means or what language it's in and it'll just kind of crunch through it all and it'll give you some regularities. That can be very helpful, but machine learning is considered slightly different from data science because it doesn't involve the particular applications in a specific domain. Also, there's traditional research. This is where you have math or statistics and you have domain knowledge, often very intensive domain knowledge, but without the coding or programming. Now you can get away with that because the data that you use in traditional research is highly structured. It comes in rows and columns is typically complete and is typically ready for analysis. Doesn't mean your life is easy because now you have to expend an enormous amount of effort in the method in designing the project and in the interpretation of the data. So still very heavy intellectual cognitive work, but it comes in a different place. And then finally, there's what Conway called the danger zone. And that's the intersection of coding and domain knowledge, but without math or statistics. Now, he says it's unlikely to happen. And that's probably true. On the other hand, I can think of some common examples what are called word counts, where you take a large document or a series of documents and you count how often each word appears in there. That can actually tell you some important things. And also drawing maps and showing how things change across place and maybe across time. You don't necessarily have to have the math, but it can be very insightful and helpful. So let's think about a couple of backgrounds where people come from here. First is coding. You can have people who are coders who can do math, stats, and business. So you get the three things, and this is probably the most common. Most of the people come from a programming background. On the other hand, there's also stats or statistics. And you can get statisticians who can code and who also can do business. That's less common, but it does happen. And finally, there's people who come into data science from a particular domain. These are, for instance, business people who can code and do numbers, and they're the least common. But all of these are important to data science. And so in sum, here's what we can take away. First, several fields make up data science. Second, diverse skills and backgrounds are important and they're needed in data science. And third, there are many roles involved because there's a lot of different things that need to happen. We'll say more about that in our next movie.